Okay, ready to go. Got the starting point over there. Next morning, day one, finished in the dark, and we got quite a bit done. We had to do some sandbagging too. Almost knocked the wall over a couple of times, but we'll finish that off now. I don't really think you can get much perspective about how much we've dug there until you start seeing the pile of soil we've got. But the good news is a metre and a half down, we hit some really, really good clay. The trusty sandbag fillers out. Unfortunately, we've dug out a load of sand from this hole too. Just going to fill the first lot of bags with all this spoil that's on the top of the wall now. The bags are flying in. That's the dam's retaining wall finished off. We've just got to render it now. Right then, back to digging. We're going to have to try and work a bit fast to get this all smooth and level so it all flows towards this corner though. Pretty much as I'm building it in stages, I can't have this fill with water and then this little bit fill with water and so on. I have to pump each one separately. I need it to all be connected and, sm and smoothly flow over towards where the dam is over here. And then hopefully it should all flow out of the dam or to the very deep corner that I've dug over there that I can pump out. The sluice fully backfilled and the walls rendered now. Just got a final bit of this clay to chip out so we can make a nice smooth path that flows all the way over this direction. Want all this area in front of the sluice to be a nice boggy area for reeds, etc. Both of these really deep pits are dug are completely full. Now, if you can just about make out, there's a bit of a lip forming around this where it's actually filling too. And that's because that's the gravel layer. Now, that is, in theory, the same height as the river, I believe. So that's going to be my high point at the lowest point ever, which is going to be a year like this when we've had next to no rain. But if it drops to this level again next summer, I'm probably going to fill all that clay gravel layer with some clay bentonite to seal it all up. I've got about 80% of the perimeter dug now. As you can see, put the spoil right to the side of it. I'm definitely going to be digging this in about four different parts. Just the top coat of render to go on the sandbags. Other than that, the damn exit is done. I'm just mixing render and I don't need a bucket. I need a bag for life. Pretty much a hack for anyone doing small batches of render or small batches of concrete. No need to mess about anymore. Just add in the usual five to one. That's five sand and one cement. Then just the splash of water. Bosha. Mixed up beautifully. Now, I'm not going to lie, I saw somebody else doing this on the internet and I thought, what a good idea and perfect for this small batch job I need to do. Perfect for the small mixes of little bits of render like this. What I have been doing though is just emptying it out into my bucket that I was going to mix it in. Makes it easier to slap on the wall that way then. But yeah, it is ridiculously labour saving compared to mixing it with a shovel. And it still gives a nice, lovely, smooth finish as well. This stuff does stick really well though. So the structure of the dam's mostly in place. I've just got a tiny bag wall to build on both sides. Luckily, I'm not running out of sand anytime soon. Building all this retaining wall from earth bags using the sand is a lot of graft, but it's worth it. As they say, if you want something done cheap and good, it's going to take a long time. Going to need to mix up some more render to finish all this off, but it's already strong with just one coat. Both of these walls need a second coat on the bottom and two coats on the top. When the pond fills, it shouldn't come more than halfway up this first section. So this whole top section is kind of structurally separate and only needed in a massive, massive flood scenario. Just need one here. The same as I've started doing on this side. And this way, even worst case scenario, we have a flood twice the size of ever we've had before. This should be well above flood height. You can see that little opening there. I'm going to drop it down one more. And that is basically where flood height usually gets to. In the last big flood, I came up with an official mark just below the crotch where the water gets to. And then when the opening in the right spot, I can either block it up or allow controlled flooding back into the moat. A lot of people think I'm building my sandbag walls wrong because I'm just stacking them one on top of another. Which obviously isn't as strong as if I overlapped them. But with a wall like this, I've built many now. And I found it makes zero difference when you're building a wall that's under five bags high. Now granted, it may give a fraction of extra support before you get to this stage, which is what I call stage one of rendering. Pretty much just slap in some render between the bags to fill the gaps up, effectively pointing all these gaps in the bags. Then we have stage two, which is this bit I'm finishing off now, which is a nice 
half inch to an inch thick top coat of render. Now once all of this is on, it actually makes a really, really strong surface. You may have seen a couple of other of my videos where I've built sandbag stuff. I built roundhouse in a real similar fashion, apart from I did crisscross them then. And the same thing, I found that all the strength actually came to the building when I rendered it. There was minimum strength in the building before I did that. So from then on, I've pretty much chose, especially when I'm doing low walls, not to bother alternating them and stacking them in a brick fashion because I don't think it really matters especially if you're getting the render on pretty much straight away but yeah I've got plenty more sandbags to fill when I'm doing the castle so if you've got any ideas on how I can actually improve the strength of this I had thought about fibers in the render or something like that let me know in the comments so it's the final step of building myself a dam I've just got to render these top bags such a small wall I wasn't really anticipating it being a problem but because of where it is and it's awkward to stand next to it's been a bit of a nightmare I've been really struggling to get up close to it especially on the other side and my splash methods are letting me down because my mix is too dry I've gone and bought myself one of these fancy air guns that blows out render so hopefully soon I'll do this much faster and with all the sandbags to do on the island to build the castle it's going to be a hell of a long time if I can do this all by hand I know I'm filming a video at the same time, but I'm already 10 minutes into doing this little tiny bit. This mix is a little dry, so I'm just going to point the gaps in the bags first. So it does look like I'm going to need to have one more little mission doing this tomorrow. I did think I might end up having to do two coats on this bit anyway. As I mentioned in other videos, it's usually a two-stage uh, thing. Stage one is pointing the bags like this, and then stage two is doing the top coat was hoping with a little wall to just be able to do it all in one though but it's not looking likely got all the damn walls rendered up now i just need to whack in wood support on both sides this one fits in real tight <sighs> just thought i should probably set the height of where i want it to empty before i wedge those in firm sort of there i'll just use a bit of clay as a wedge on both sides okay so that isn't working i'm going to try and pin it in place with one of these big screws Now, hopefully, that's that locked in position. So with that all done, I've just got to keep back filling with clay now. It's a good job I've got about 30 tonne of it. I specifically piled up this bit of sandy clay on the corner here to do this job with. Because, yeah, I do anticipate needing to fill this up multiple times before it will hold water, but we shall see. So the dam's finished, and it's a really good job because the pond is filling up fast. Got all of the rendering done on the tops of the walls, and all the ones on the outside too. So in theory, that is complete now. And the way that this is all holding water so far, I really do think there's going to be no problem at all with it filling up to that level that I've set with the hole there. So that hole there is where the pond should be, which means it minimum should be about two feet deep, hopefully. But I've put the rest of the sleepers above it there. So if we have one of the mega floods that we're getting now due to huge industrial estates and lots of houses built upriver, I can sort of control any massive amounts of water coming back into the pond by blocking up that hole with a little bit of wood extra or something. Now I am thinking super simple, if I know it's going to flood I'll come down here and whack a piece of wood across it because if I do put fish in this bit of water too, I don't want them swimming back out either. It should be fine if water fills in here, it would be a slow feed of flood effectively and this will be able to take a hell of a lot of water in this area, but I don't want to lose any fish. 